getting into this conversation this morning. Our guest is seated and we're having a conversation about what's been happening over the last one year. The Vihiga County Senator Godfrey Osotsi is our guest this morning. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Good morning, Kenyans mm. who are listening or watching me mm. and uh, two of you. Thank you very much for this opportunity mm. to come to and uh, talk to, to you yeah. and the rest of the Kenyans. We're very happy to have you here. Uh, this is the hot seat of the Situation Room. And um, I don't think we need to warm things up uh, for you. It looks like you'll be able to do that just for yourself um, <laughs> as we get into this conversation. But before we get things cooking, CT will welcome us, welcome you properly with today's proverb. Mm, our proverbs for the whole of this week come from the country of Niger. For the longest time, I knew it was called Niger. And then Ndu came along and told me, well, Niger is the river. Niger River. Niger River is found in Nigeria. And this country is not Niger. It is Niger. So, the country of Niger. Okay? A piece of wood that has been burnt easily catches fire. A piece of wood that has been burnt easily catches fire, Senator. What do you think about that? Well, uh... I think it's practical even here in Kenya uh, that um, you know a piece of wood that has uh, burnt it means it's dry enough to to uh, easily catch fire. Uh, it applies in many situations uh, in our life, especially here in Kenya. Uh, and I think it's going to be part of what is going to come out of this. Uh, show today. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You know why this particular proverb struck me? Mm. You know, when, when one is preparing these proverbs, one comes across an entire plethora. You, there are very many proverbs to choose from. But in fact, the reason why we're actually looking at proverbs in Niger is I was reading, and in my reading, I was looking at just the amount of turmoil in the last two years we've had in West Africa. Mm. One country, one coup after another, disturbances. And I thought, now surely there must be a way to try and understand what's actually happening. Okay, there's what we read, but what is it about the people in these countries? And then Niger had their coups. So I thought, okay, why don't we focus on this country and figure out? And this particular proverb, I thought, for there to be a coup and for the coup leaders to claim that what they're doing is something that resonates with the people, that particular piece of wood had caught fire somewhere. Mm. So it was now very, very easy to ignite. Okay. Yes. I, I think I now understand your context. Yes. Uh, you know, Niger, uh, as part of the countries within the, the French... Um, the Francophone countries. In yes. Western Africa, mm -hmm. they have been going through a lot of challenges. Yes, they have. Uh, you go to countries like Burkina Faso, yes. uh, countries like uh, uh, Gabon mm. and the others. Mm. Uh, there is um, resistance towards uh, French uh, French uh, interference in their politics, mm. uh, and and I think it's reaching a, a point where uh, people are saying no to 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 external interference of the French. Mm. You know, uh, even as we speak now, the the um, central bank. Is controlled from uh, from Paris, from, from Paris. Paris. Yes, yeah? and uh, those countries are largely, extremely poor <laughs> hmm? mm. uh, in infrastructure and in many ways. In fact, uh, the whole of uh, West Africa, uh, and I'm happy she comes from there. Mm. Uh, when you go to maybe Ghana and Nigeria, you see difference compared to the rest of West Africa. Ivory Coast a bit, Senegal a bit, mm. but the others are largely poor. And that speaks to the French rule <laughs> over those countries. Mm. So what is happening in Niger is largely uh, uh, resistance towards French rule and um, we are told that there is also some aspect of uh, Russian mm. influence, uh, in influence okay. in it. Those are interesting words. Resistance, influence, many things coming into conversations that we can actually uh, bring here yeah. um, in Kenya. So August 9th happened, 2022, yes. uh, which forms the basis for our conversation today. And 
August 10th, August 11th, then were met with resistance. Uh, the days we woke up to not so uh, peaceful were it uh, situations where the numbers that were coming in were not pleasurable to many. We saw many things happening. We saw press conferences called. We saw uh, media uh, presses being given, telling us about, you know, uh, the possibility of a heist having taken place at Bomas, and that uh, President William Ruto now, having been declared president, was an illegality. It was not done right. There was conflict from the get-go. So here we are, a year and a week later, and uh, there still seems to be a standoff between Kenya Kwanzaa, who is in government, and Azimio, who is in the opposition. From your point of view, Senator, of course, playing right in the center of a lot of these things today, what's your overview? What would be your overview of what exactly is going on today now that we've gone into bipartisan talks even? Well, uh, uh, one, we have to appreciate the fact that uh, as a mayor, we are still contesting the, the results of the election. Oh, we are? Uh, okay. We are. <laughs> uh, and that's why is one of the issues that uh, we have presented as a issue for discussion. Remember the opening of the server, uh, which we are demanding that it should be one of the issues because you want to know the truth. Uh, we may not do much with the truth at this point because William Ruto is uh, uh, on the seat, but it's important for Kenya to know the truth so that such a scenario does not arise in future. We also need to know the truth so that we can um, look at um, the possible reforms, the electoral reforms that uh, we can implement as a country so that we don't go back to, to that scenario again. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so there is a larger issue of legitimacy which is hanging on William Ruto. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Azimio has gone to the extent of trying to prove that indeed we have an issue with the election results. And that's why we decided to go, let's have people uh, giving us their signatures, our voters. And as we are talking now, we have over 8.5 million voters who have signed uh, that uh, uh, document mm -hmm. uh, questioning the legitimacy of the election and um, invoking Article 1 of the Constitution that uh, vests uh, sovereign powers in the people of Kenya. Okay. So it, the, the, the first issue is that uh, we are still contesting the election and we want to discuss it. Number two, there are issues which have emerged. The issue of performance of uh, Kenya Kwanzaa mm -hmm. one year later uh, is an issue. When we talk about cost of living, cost of living is a serious issue in this country. And uh, Azimio has consistently been pushing for uh, a discussion on the issue of cost of living. Mm. On the other hand, Kenya Kwanzaa have been saying, no, we cannot discuss cost of living. Cost of living is affected by international factors and cost of living is a policy issue, so we can't discuss it. But we are insisting we have to discuss it because uh, we are leaders, just like them. We are elected by the people. So I think it's important to address uh, concerns of the people because Article 95 of the Constitution of Kenya mm. uh, clearly states uh, that uh, w one of the roles of uh, Parliament is to address concerns of the people. And the concerns of the people at the moment is a high cost of living. And um, uh, to uh, demonstrate that actually Azimio is right, you have seen Kenya Kwanzaa has uh, tried to, uh, to, 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 to do things around uh, subsidies. Mm. They said they will never do subsidies. Now, you, recently, the review of petroleum uh, prices, uh, they have uh, now introduced subsidies. Would that not speak to the, uh, you know, they did not refuse. The Kenya Kwanzaa government has not refused. President William Ruto has accepted that, yes, the cost of living is something that is a, it's an issue, that they want to see what they can do about it. Wouldn't that just fuel this sentiment that he put out there 
in the beginning that they realize that things are actually hard but they're trying all that they can do to make sure that kenyans can survive and then thrive through it wouldn't it be i right? think we, we we think that he can do uh, more okay. and he can do better uh, and um, if you look at the some of the measures they have come up with to address the issue of cost of living those measures are ra- largely uh, uh, failed and uh, those measures are also avenues to uh, enhance corruption among the politically correct people. Mm-hmm. I want to give you an example. Mm-hmm. Uh, they told us that uh, the dollar is very high and uh, uh, that means uh, it also affects the economy, it also affects cost of living. So what was their solution? Their solution was to go and uh, engage into government to government deal with the Saudi Arabia to bring in uh, petroleum products. Uh, and they told us within a short time the cost of dollars would go down. Mm-hmm. I remember even uh, uh, Mr. Gashag was saying that if you are keeping dollars in your house, know that they are going to be useless very soon. Mm. You better take them to the bank. Mm. But what has happened? They brought in tons and tons uh, liters of uh, uh, petroleum products. Uh, no one knows the details of the deal. The deal was not sanctioned by parliament. Uh, we do not know the players, the suppliers. And the details are very scanty. And now, several months after, the dollar has instead gone up. up. Mm-hmm. That has failed. Number two, I remember the CS for agriculture making this uh, very strange statement that Kenya has acquired uh, Le- uh, lease leased land in Zambia to plant maize mm. uh, because it is cheaper to plant maize in Zambia and then ship it back to to Kenya. Uh, no one is talking about that. The details are very scanty. There was no parliamentary approval. Uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, engagement is not very clear. So that has failed again. Then the president himself went to Tana River and said, we are going to ensure Galana Kulalu will work. Will yeah. work. Mm-hmm. And uh, with Galana Kulalu working, we are sure of uh, producing enough maids for local consumption. What is the status? Four months down the line, nothing is happening. It has failed. Then, has it failed? Can you, can you apply... Can you apply you know, uh, a judgment of failure upon something that n- ordinarily would need time to be able to work. You don't put a seed in the ground today and you get your fruit tomorrow kind of thing. Four months ago, mm. when he said that they were going to uh, uh, revive Galana Kulalu, mm. if you planted maize four months uh, ago, mm. by now you'd be harvesting. Mm. They told us about fertilizer. And they said they are going to invest in production. They are going to subsidize production, not consumption. So they are going to uh, bring in fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Now, that fertilizer, a lot of questions are there. We have fertilizer that was donated by the Russian government. Mm -hmm. So which is this fertilizer? And they are now selling it at 2,500. Is it sustainable? What if the donated stocks run out? Are we going back to the old prices? So... This, to us, a lot of questions around it. Okay. So, so uh, and, and many, many, many other things that have come up, including the arrangement that they were going to implode, um, import cheap foodstuffs, edible oil. Yes. Uh, so that through Kenya National Trading Corporation, so that they can push down the co- co- cost of uh, foodstuffs. You know what happened? It became an avenue for corruption. People who are politically linked to Kenya Kwanza go the tenders. We know the, this as yes, yes it's, a, it's already the matter is already in Parliament mm-hmm. being handled by the Trade uh, Committee in Parliament, mm-hmm. and uh, even the Cabinet Secretary for Trade is mm-hmm. implicated in it. So, and then it ended up being higher prices than even what they had anticipated. So, we when we look at cost of living. And uh, they tell us that they are going to address cost of living. We are saying, no, you are using cost of living problem to try and perpetuate corruption. You are uh, 
coming up with policies which are not sustainable. Mm. We want a sustainable arrangement that is corruption free so that we reduce the cost of living in this country. I and as Mio yeah. said, one yeah. of the options is subsidies. And they said, no, subsidies don't work. Today, we are being told the IPRA has reviewed uh, petroleum pr uh, uh, prices, palm prices. And without a subsidy, we would have seen the price of fuel go up from the 194 shillings that is currently retailing for fe for petrol, 179 for diesel, and 169 for kerosene. Had they not applied a subsidy, we yeah. would have seen the price it, it, it of all of up. these products having gone up. It will go up. Right? Now, they are saying it's no subsidy. They are coming up with a different term. They are saying it's compensation. It is subsidy because they are drawing money from the Petroleum Development Levy Fund. Uh, well, that has been happening over the years. Okay. Half of 50% of the Petroleum and Development Levy Fund is now going into uh, uh, subsidizing petroleum. Senator, do you think, and look at the case that has been made uh, along oftentimes is that if I come to you and I say that what you're doing is not sustainable, because here you are saying that, you know, the cost of living is an issue, right? The election results are an issue. And I want to ask questions about the 15 million signatures and where those are going to go and who's going to, who is going to then act upon that. But that will come. At this point, we've had a back and forth. Many would argue that the people of Kenya are the bait that is being used here to say that the people of Kenya are suffering because of the high cost of living. And we need to do something about it in order to get them back on the page. Usually the role of opposition, and I think we've mentioned this over and over again, that the role of opposition, even when we talk about a problem that is being faced by the government of the day, is to either prefer what would be the solution if I was in the position, or at least say, this is what you're doing, remove it and add this other one. And I think that's the question. If we're looking at the cost of living, which is biting everybody today, as opposition, what would be a solution that you can say, let's use it? Because many would say that subsidies for government are expensive, that you have to provide money because that's essentially what you're doing. You are putting money forward so that the people do not have to bear the responsibility of paying extra for it. Can the government today, where an economy is failing, can a government today, where globally there's an issue, afford to put money forward in order for the citizens not to thrive across board, whether it's agriculture, whether it's fuel, whether it is um, uh, uh, on tax, whatever it is, as you see it today, would it make sense to apply subsidies across board? Well, uh, you know, one thing is that uh, the strategy of Kenya Kwanzaa mm. is to collect uh, as much tax as possible, increase tax and collect. That is their strategy. But uh, I want to tell you that strategy will fail without proper uh, social protection measures. It's going to fail uh, because you cannot just collect tax without having the social or welfare aspect of it. And, and that's why we are saying that uh, we, we need to really look at uh, what are the various social uh, welfare measures that uh, should be undertaken to uh, cushion Kenyans from high taxation, uh, from uh, high cost of living. And as Mio has talked about this, we have given solutions. And one of the ways of us giving solution is to go on a round table. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are saying, let cost of living be an issue to be discussed in the bipartisan talk. How should we sort out? How should And we'll be able to give our solutions there. Okay, so here we are saying that there is an issue that the, all of Kenya is having right now. Why wouldn't that solution come from and say, this is what you ought to do? Why can't it be made public? Why does it have to be on the table whereby let's agree? Because if it's something that should be applied to Kenyans, why do two parties have to agree to that thing? that can actually then just be made public and we go with you it. Know, you if, it's the, if, it's, if it is that simple, why not just say this is what we ought to do and agree on it in public? Why do we have to go through this 60-day thing? Uh, you, you, you know, let me tell you, let me take you back. Mm. Uh, we, 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 we went to the streets to demonstrate. Yes. Uh, largely because uh, the other side was not listening. They said they will not listen to us. Even if we tell them anything, they will not listen to us. We, we, we went into an election and they won. So they are in power. So they will not listen to the opposition. Mm. And we said, no, 
you have to listen to us. So that's why we went to the streets. Now we have an opportunity as a Zimeo and uh, Kenya Kwanza to sit down and agree. And I, I want to agree with you, 60 days is a long period of time. Mm. Because even me, if I sat on that table, I know what I would propose to reduce the cost of living. So we do not need 60 days. And uh, I want to encourage our team who are sitting on that uh, bipartisan team to make sure that they take the shortest time possible because Kenyans want solutions right away. What would be an acceptable outcome of these talks? Because that's where we are. As we look at a year of these wrangles back and forth between Kenya Kwanzaa and Azimio, because essentially that's what we are all seeing. That's what we all watch on a daily basis. What would be an acceptable outcome of this, of these talks now that we are being held to, to have these conversations? What would be an acceptable outcome to say, okay, fine. The people of Kenya then would also be in it. What would make sense? For me, mm. the most important issues there are people issues. I know uh, Zimio has five issues. Uh, Kenya Kwanza has five issues. The most important are people issues. First, the issue of cost of living. If they come up with the acceptable uh, measures to address cost of living, I'll be happy, and I'm, I, I'm certain many other Kenyans would be happy with that. What's acceptable? Uh, I mean, the cost of unga to go down. Mm -hmm. Unga is a basic thing in this country. Uh, the cost of uh, essential foodstuff to go down. The cost of uh, fuel to go down. Uh, in fact, the cost of fuel should go down. Mm -hmm. I mean, putting 16% uh, VAT on fuel products plus the other levies is too high. Mm -hmm. I think they need to look at that and uh, probably take it back to where it was, 8%. And then we'll begin to see uh, uh, prices of uh, product going down because ours is uh, largely a fuel economy. So if we can manage the, pr uh, the prices of fuel through reduced taxation, then that will affect, uh, reduce the cost of living. Mm -hmm. So for an ordinary Kenyan, he wants to see the prices of essential commodities going down that will be acceptable. And number two, uh, high taxation. Mm. Uh, the, I, I know we, we had a battle over uh, the finance bill, which has now become Finance Act, and the matter is in court. And the issues that people are raising are very valid. For example, the 1.5% tax on housing, it's, uh, to me and to many Kenyans, it's unnecessary. And uh, the other day I was talking to the players mm. in the water sector, the water service providers, uh, the water companies in counties. And I was saying they are going to, to review their tariffs to go up because of the 1.5% uh, levy. Mm. Because they have to pay 1.5% levy for their staff and 1.5% as an employer. So that... Where are they going to get that? They are going to review the tariff. So the cost of water is going to go up. And uh, also other essentials like cost of electricity will go up. So we are going to see cost of everything going up as a result of that housing tax. And according to you, there's something that can be done. One of the things you did mention, the number one thing you mentioned was that we still want to know the election results. Truth, according to you. So the truth is different from what we are currently seeing today. Is that what you're saying? That the truth of the situation may be different from the current situation? Yes. How so? Well, uh, we have contested the election. Mm. Uh, and we have uh, very good reasons why we are saying so. Mm. Uh, you remember we also published uh, the results for the election, which clearly shows that uh, Honorable Raila Odinga won the election. Results that you got from? Uh, the results that he got from a whistleblower within IBC. Mm -hmm. You have heard about that? Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, I know the Kenya Kwanzaa side uh, contested and said, Of course, no, no, no. for them yet to be authenticated but, but, but in terms I of how that just, came about. But have, we have demonstrated that further mm. by asking Kenyans who are d d displeased with this regime to, 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 to sign uh, the... the, the the tumechoka.com mm -hmm. uh, list and uh, overwhelming 8.5 voters have signed so far.
and our target is 15 million. And I can tell you we are mm. going to achieve 15 million. So the question then is, these 15 million signatures, to whom would they go? And for what purpose then would they serve? Let, let me tell you one thing. Mm. Uh, if you read the constitution very carefully, mm. the preamble to the constitution starts with the, we the people. Yes, it does. We the people. Mm -hmm. Uh, meaning that uh, the constitution gives uh, a lot of premium to the people of Kenya. Number two, Article 1 of the constitution uh, vests uh, sovereign powers in the people of Kenya. And the people of Kenya can exercise those powers directly as the people of Kenya or indirectly through their representative through uh, the representative in the executive, mm -hmm. including the president, representative in uh, legislature, including parliament and senate, and representative in the judiciary. Those representatives are only exercising secondary powers. They do not have primary powers. The primary powers vest in the people. Now, you know what happened during uh, the voting for finance bill. The people's representative in the National Assembly either did not show up or either they did actually not show voted up, to support the bill. Either did not show up mm. or some of them were bribed. And this was confirmed by none other than uh, Honorable uh, Osoro, mm. who came out and said, I am the whip, majority whip. I know I gave some members uh, the soup to vote for the bill some decided uh, to hide uh, within parliament presence without appearing in the house to vote now the wanjiku was very disappointed that the people he has elected to go and represent him to go and raise his concerns on the floor of the house were not there so what do you expect wanjiku to do wanjiku should be allowed to exercise the powers bestowed on the people of Kenya under Article 1 of the Constitution. Maybe Wajiko should also be asking a question about why those people are actually there in the first place who should actually be representing their needs and it's so easy to sway them. People on the Azimio side, Senator, who should have been able to fight tooth and nail for this Wanjiko that everybody keeps dangling about like a carrot, in my opinion, to say that it's the people that we're fighting for, it's the people that we're representing. At the point when the very people should have been fought for on the floor of the house, when you actually have the power to change things. They were not represented. Now we are calling on Wanjiko after the fact to come and fight. You know, when, when should it have been done? In Parliament. That's you know, when it should have been done. It wasn't done. You know, Parliament has been captured. I sit there. Even in the Senate. I sit there and some of the things I see, I, I get worried. Uh, not as a, as a Senator, but as a Kenyan. I get worried. The other day, we had a chance as a Senate to increase the money that it goes to counties. Last year, last financial year, uh, counties got 370 billion shareable revenue. And this uh, new financial year, we were given a chance to increase that to 407, increase that by 27 billion. Mm. And uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa senators rejected that. They knew they were doing the wrong thing. But because of uh, pressure from State House, from the President, they were called in a PG meeting and mm. told, you must not support this. And they did exactly that. Mm -hmm. So whom are they representing? Are they representing the people? Or are they are representing their parties? Or are they are representing their party leader? That's the question. Same applied to uh, National Assembly mm. when it came to the finance bill. Uh, and uh, I want to agree with you that some Azimio members actually either voted for the bill or stayed away yeah. or went for a was sponsored to go out of the country for a trip. And that is why Azimio, one of the issues that we are raising in the bipartisan talks is interference in political parties. You have seen uh, the Jubilee side. Uh, the side that is led by Sabina Cheke, mm. they were voted in as uh, Azimio. But they, when they went to <laughs> Parliament, they have switched camp. 
They are now in Kenya Kwanza. You saw UDM and uh, Senator Roba. They have all switched camp and gone to the other side. Were they forced, tied to a tree, tethered on a very short rope to be able to do this? Did the words come forced out of their mouths? This is my question, that in as much as we can say that parliament has been captured, it's not the first time that those talks have been, you know, those sentiments have been laid bare, right? It's been said before. But then we also, are we seeing a situation whereby we're saying, oh, they have captured me, I cannot speak. Folks don't seem very upset to be have been captured. You, you see, the, in this case, you've seen the meetings. Uh, you live in this country. You've seen uh, meetings in State House. Mm -hmm. the Jubilee people have gone to State House. Uh, some ODM members have gone to State House. And when they go there, they usually say one thing. Mm. We have gone to work with the president because we want development for our in people. In our area, yes. We want development for, for our people. That has been the excuse. Then when they come on the floor, they don't vote according to the wishes of their people. They vote according to the wishes of the executive. And that is a problem. And that's why, as Emilio is saying, let us respect political parties. Let that be one of the agendas of that meeting. So that when you are elected on party A, mm -hmm. you are elected by the people on that party A because they think you'll better represent their interest on that house under party A. Then you go there, you change. You become party B. But doesn't that speak of you as an individual as opposed to your party? We've known from the very beginning, uh, especially in Kenya, that party lines are not drawn on ideology. Party lines are drawn largely on an individual, the one who runs the party and the individual who is seeking for political office. That is true. That is true. That so is true. shouldn't it be questioned about the individual then that we are talking about here? If an individual is so easily bought, then one must question where they are loyalty really lies and maybe it's about time Kenya, Kenya started to ask really those who are said to represent me if it is so easy to be swayed if it is so easy for you to jump ship from one place to another when we see it in parliament what guarantee is there that as you go to those talks then that you will not be swayed in one way or another what's the guarantee we've seen it happen what's the guarantee now because remember we've been told it is Kenyans who are being fought for it's Kenyans who are being fought for the cost of living, for Kenyans to know the truth, for something to be done for Kenyans. I think uh, I want to acknowledge uh, uh, your fears that uh, we can't, we don't have guarantee that things will go uh, the Monainchi way. Uh, those fears are valid. But uh, I also want you to acknowledge the fact that uh, we have come f from far as Kenya. Uh, if you lived in this country longer, uh, or you realize that during uh, those dark days of uh, Kano and Amoy, the uh, situation was worse than what we have now. Mm. Because then we had uh, one political party called Kano, mm. and uh, there was no room for alternative views. And uh, people fought, people went on the streets. And that's why we have Saba Saba. But that's and that's why how we Senator. ended up having multi-party. Isn't that the issue, though? That the zeitgeist at the time was that you could actually live in a position and you, you lived under fear, right? Yes. But guess what? The situation has changed. But individuals are still behaving as though the times are the same. That, you know what? I must vote in a certain way or I must behave in a certain way in order for development to come to me. So... This is the thing, that the mentality is still the same. So, that for me, it's very clear to me. And somebody has to do a lot of convincing to convince myself and very many others that even at those bipartisan talks, the same mentality will not be all right. So, uh -huh, what's in it for me? And you're not thinking about 50 million Kenyans who are waiting for you outside of those doors. Well, that, that you, can't, uh, you can't avoid that. There are people who will still think personal. Uh, but uh, I think uh, this is a serious conversation we need to have. Absolutely. So that we have leaders who don't just think about their interests, they should think about people's interests. And, uh, you know, I started by explaining that though we still have that challenge, but we are making progress. We look at where we have come from. We fought for multi-party, we got it. We fought for, uh, of course, there were others who went to Itu Gali in State House. Mm. You can't miss such. Then we fought for a new constitution. There are others who fought it. 
uh, but we got a new constitution. Now we are uh, in uh, multi-party with a new constitutional order. There are challenges like corruption. There are challenges like interference in political party. So we are improving with the time. So talking about these issues and trying to do something is a positive way than not talking about it and not trying to do anything. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to give them uh, a chance, those who are around the bipartisan uh, uh, team, I saw some very positive progress yesterday mm. uh, that uh, at least there was no uh, uh, push and uh, pull. Uh, uh, they have now sponsored a motion jointly, which was tabled in the National Assembly, mm. to anchor that committee in, in law. law yes. uh, when you see them meeting, like yesterday, you see a, a bit of harmony. So we, we, we need to give them time and just see what comes out of it. But as I said, my expectation is that uh, let the people uh, issues be uh, given premium. The issue of high cost of living, the issue of high taxation, and uh, the issue of electoral justice. Electoral justice is not just an issue affecting politicians. It affects all of us. If we have proper electoral justice in this country, then people will not go to the streets then people will quickly settle down and start engaging in economic activity to develop this country. So it is an issue that affects the people. So for me, um, I look forward to uh, some positive uh, uh, outcome of these talks, and that should, be, should not wait for 60 days. If they agree within a week, then let's move on and table those issues and let the country move on. Mm. We, they don't have to wait for 60 days to, to get things done. You know, when you talk about the history that we have in this country, everything you've said reminds me of just one point, that when you achieve something politically, it doesn't mean it's the end. It means you now must prepare for new fights. Yes. Because having, got, yes, having gotten there, there's a fight of maintaining what you've gotten and ensuring that you keep improving on it. Because uh, I look at the government of Uhuru Kenyatta, the thing I remember them for most is how they bastardized Chapter 6 of the Constitution. They made sure that this accountability that Mwishimi was talking about was somewhat on paper, but you could not action it. They didn't obliterate it, but they essentially disabled it. So the whole process, whatever was intended to bring about accountability within the moral fiber of the country, once it is fractured, it then people then know that legally it is difficult for you to hold them to account. So essentially you've given them a free pass to do what they want to do because they know very well there's very little you're going to be able to do about it. So essentially, it's like turning the tide. The very, very achievements that we're talking about within a single and a second term of a presidency, you find that that particular win is slowly being eroded. And now we come to this particular government and we're saying we want to try and see how best we can likely retain those gains. You know, it always brings us to one question, Moshimeo, when we come here. Yes. Maybe you can help us understand because you deal with fellow Moshimeo. What happens to people when they get to parliament? Because they are a different set of people, even when you talk to them outside parliament. When they get to parliament, you wonder, what happened to these people? We have the most educated parliament we've had since we became independent. Yet, everything that you see coming from there, you keep looking and wondering, surely, surely, surely. And I don't believe that they do not know what's happening in the country. They do know. Because they live here. Uh, it's all uh, about a clash of interest. Mm. Uh, we have personal interest, we have uh, party interest, we have uh, uh, government interest, and we have the people's interest. Mm. So what comes first? Mm. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it, it's the issue. So that clash, in most cases, you find it's end up in personal interest. Uh, and that's the most unfortunate thing about it. But uh, the good thing is that uh, voters always have a chance to uh, or make a judgment five years later mm -hmm. uh, and uh, unfortunately uh, you find that the same same people are elected back. Mishima, that's the problem. Five years is too long. Mm. 
If an error has been made, you want it compounded. You, you're essentially saying, we're giving you five years to compound this mistake that we're seeing you make. So by the time five years have lasted, it won't be that small mistake. It will be a monster of a mistake. Yeah. Yes. I agree with you. Yes. But uh, I think it's something that we need to engage. And um, though I am for the idea that the bipartisan talk should focus on the people issues, but I think this other aspect that Azmiu is bringing in, uh, the issue of uh, protection of political parties, I think is important for us to uh, really give it a lot of premium because uh, that uh, issue is arising from the fact that people are elected uh, and then when they go in, they use all manner of excuses to switch camp. Mm. Eh? Uh, uh, like now, uh, opposition in this country. Uh, remember we had that issue of who is a majority party in the National Assembly. Mm. Yes. And uh, Azimio clearly on paper had a majority, more members than uh, Kenya Kwanza. Mm. But our numbers were hit when people now were paraded in State House. And they left there and said, we have gone to work with the president because of development for our people. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine if uh, entire opposition did that and went there? What will happen to the multi-party politics in this country? So this is a conversation that we really need to engage in as Kenyans. Uh, so that if you are elected on opposition ticket, remain opposition ticket. Mm -hmm. If you are elected in government, remain government. Because really with a new constitution there is no opposition and government in 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 in, in parliament there's majority and minority there yeah. is majority and minority and essentially everyone is supposed to be opposition because you are oversighting the government indeed do you think that the opposition as it is currently constituted in kenya can actually achieve what an opposition ought to to push government to behave in a certain manner to do certain things to behave in a certain way and do you think that Azimio is ready, really ready, to take up that role? Let me tell you, already Azimio has achieved quite a lot. They have put this government on check. Eh? They are, and that's why they have agreed to sit and talk. We were just talking, uh, before you walked in, we were talking about the decision by Kenya Kwanza to put subsidies on uh, fuel. They said they will never do subsidies. Mm. Now they have realized they will not succeed without subsidies. They are calling it, they are using different terminology. They are talking about compensation. But it's just subsidy. So this has come because of pressure from Azimio. Now we are on the table, we are discussing, we want to discuss serious things like cost of living. That is a pressure from Azimio. And I think uh, Azimio, they will succeed. What we are saying is that we need to remain consistent, we re need to remain faithful, and uh, uh, personal interests should be put aside. And uh, one strength that Azimio has is leadership. The leadership of Raila Molo Dink mm -hmm. uh, is uh, what is going to make Azimio stronger and stronger as we head into 2027. Mm. So I am confident that uh, opposition will add value to this country. Mm. Do you think, I mean, just really quickly, as we're wi winding down to the end of this, that as we go into the, I mean, as the talks then proceed, going into the next, you know, couple of weeks, couple of days, that it will be clear again that the people of Kenya are front and center of this discussion and it is for their good that these talks are being held? Well, uh, as I said, uh, let's uh, wait and see. Um, yeah, I, I, before yesterday, I was worried. Mm. Uh, because of the kind of statements that were emanating from uh, the Kenya Kwanza side, particularly the chair, the co-chair of uh, the talks, the Honorable Kimani Chungwa, who was uh, uh, making fun of the talks. Remember, he said uh, we we should go to Nyao Stadium and uh, talk about the talks. We should uh, make the talks live. And Azimio said, we are ready. Let's mm. go to Kasarandi. <laughs> uh, and said, we are ready. Let's make it live. And they changed. Mm. They now decided, let's go to Bombers of Kenya. Uh, so, so, and then at some point they said, we are not going to talk about cost of living. Mm. 
That is not an issue. We should not talk about it. We are not going to talk about the handshake. Mm-hmm. We said we are not interested in the handshake, handshake. But we are interested in cost of living. Because cost of living, they cannot run away from it. Remember, during the campaigns, mm. they used to tell people that cost of living is the most important thing. Well, let's see how I remember, I remember, forward. I remember President Ruto said <laughs> people don't eat roads. The, the, the expressway <laughs> mm. is useless. People don't eat road. People eat food. Let us talk about cost of living. Let's Now, see how it goes. Now, we have mm. taken the thing back to them and told them, let us talk about cost of living. Let's see how the talks goes. Senator uh, for Vihiga County, Godfrey Asochi, thank you for joining us this morning. Asante Sana. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.